Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 165 of my poker vlog. For this one, I played a 2-5 session at one Eye Jacks in Sarasota, Florida. Before I get into the hands, I had one fun hand to share with you from my club GG. Games are running every day at approximately 6 p.m. I'm always in there, and I even stream certain Mondays. Message me on Instagram at Kyle underscore official if you would like some details to get into the games. Ooh, two clubs. Betting small, I guess. Maybe he just whiffed. I block all the club draws. Eighty-seven seems to be the magic number. Sure, he just folds. Of course. Maybe I'll hit a club one time. Yes! Oh, what a hit. He says no and gets absolutely punished for it. Yeah, that's a pop off. That is awesome. With that fun hand, let's roll the tape. We start out at the 1 3 table, and on the first hand of note, I look down at the Queen of Hearts, Jack of Clubs, under the gun, I raise to $15. The cutoff small blind and big blind call, so we end up going four ways to a flop of Jack 10 3 with two hearts. Having the Queen of Hearts, I'm not worried about too many flush draws. I'm going to go for a relatively standard C bet, bet $25. To this bet, the late position player folds, the small blind folds, and then the big blind decides to stick around. So we are heads up to a turn card, which is the five of clubs. When the big blind checks to me, having a block to both flush draws, I'm not too worried about too many runouts. Don't really expect my hand to be strong enough for three streets, so the turn is going to be my street of pot control. I check it back. And the river is the seven of hearts. Very bad card, because eight, nine gets there as well as the hearts, but... Not that I think I'm beat all too often, but I do think that it's hard to get value from worse. So when my opponent checks to me, I happily just check it back, and he has 9-6 of hearts. So he has one of those flushes, but happy with how we play the hand. He's never folding the turn, so we kind of lost the minimum on this one. Following that, I'm in the big blind. I looked down at pocket fives. With two limps, a late position player raises to $18. I call, both limpers call. We end up going four ways to 10-8-6 rainbow. Would have loved to flop a set, but not the case. Either way, I check in flow. I don't have the betting lead. And on the flop, it checks all the way through. Feeling somewhat better about my hand. No one should really be too strong if it checks through. And the turn is the four of hearts. Brings back to our hearts, but I do pick up a gut shot to a straight draw. Additionally, none of these players should really have exactly 9-7 all too often. I easily could. So we're going to go for a three-quarters pot size bet. Try to just take this down now with some raw aggression. I bet $60. End up getting one fold, two folds. The preflop aggressor also folds, and we take one down pretty happily, stealing this one with just a pair of fives. Next interesting hand. I'm in the cutoff with ace, six of spades. An early position player raised a $15. I think my hand's strong enough to just call. I play this hand with the goal of flush over flushing someone, not really looking at too many ace high boards. The button decides to come along as well, so we end up going three ways to ace, queen, eight, rainbow, one spade. Not quite the situation I want. You don't really want to have an ace high board when you're playing the weak wheel aces. A lot of reverse implied odds. If your opponent has a better ace, you're pretty much going to have to pay him off. But the preflop aggressor checks. Well, that's pretty good news. I should have the best hand a decent percentage of the time, but into two players, I don't think my hand's strong enough to throw out a bet here, so I check as well. The button checks it back, and we get a very good turn card in the five of spades. Picking up that flush draw we're looking for, now when the preflop aggressor checks to me, I can happily go for some value here. Not worried about too many river cards at all, so I bet $35. The button folds, but the preflop aggressor decides to call, and the river is the jack of clubs. One of the worst river cards I can think of brings queen jack, a hand that I think would on this board just go into check call mode. King 10, also somewhat likely, maybe jack 8 and 9 10, all theoretically possible for my opponent. So when he checks me, nothing I get value from much worse, I check it back. He announces jack, so I guess he had king jack or jack 10. And either way, a pair of aces is better than that, and I take down a pot. We're at the 2-5 table now, and 
When the button decides to limp, the small blind limps as well. I'm in the big blind with Jack Nine of Hearts. I think this hand's good enough for a raise versus some limpers. I make it $20. Both limpers agree that their hand is good enough for 5 and good enough for 20 So we end up going three ways to a flop, which comes King 10, 3, Rainbow, 1 Hearts. Small blind checks to me. I do have a range advantage, but I don't really want to get raised and blown off my equity. Have plenty of backdoor potential. Any 8, Jack, 9, Queen, Heart, Ace. Plenty of turn cards, which makes it much easier for me to find the win with my exact holding. So I check. The button decides to check as well, and we get a free turn card, which is the Bink Queen of Diamonds. Turn the second nuts. No one should really have Ace Jack as they limp called 20. Happily go for a small bet here. Don't think anyone has too much, hoping for single kings, single queens to pay off. So I bet $25. Only the small blind calls. Heads up to a river, which is the Eight of Hearts. Six cards straight. That's fun. Definitely need a bet here. Maybe my opponent somehow has two pair. Maybe a sticky queen, sticky king. I bet $60. It is too much. My opponent folds very quickly. No additional value when we make the straight here. Next hand of note. I'm in early position. I have queen of diamonds, 10 of hearts, and I raise to $20. The cut off the button and the big blind decide to call. So we end up going four ways to a flop, which comes jack, four, deuce, diamond, diamond, heart. Some interaction with my hand, we have backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, one over card, but into three other people, I think my hand is not good enough to throw out a bet itself. I check. Checks to the button, who bets $25. Not really going to fold with all the backdoor equity my hand has, as well as if a king or an ace hits the turn, I think I can pretty easily raise and take this down against an opponent that may or may not have a pair of jacks. So I make the call. We end up going heads up to a turn card, which is one of the ginnest cards I could think of. It's the nine of diamonds. Gives me open-ended. Gives me a queen high diamond draw. I consider leading here briefly, but I think my opponent's the type that doesn't slow down on turns when they become flop aggressors. So I think a check raise is going to be the best move. My opponent does not disappoint. He throws out $45. That's not going to be enough here. I have a ton of equity, zero showdown value. Can a jack even hang on to a raise here? I guess we're going to find out. I make it $165. It doesn't take too long for my opponent to fold, so we end up getting a pretty creative bluff through with queen high. Definitely like how I played this one. After that, I look down at the ace of spades and the queen of diamonds, and with one limp to me, I'm in the cutoff. I raise it $25. The small blind and the limper decide to call, so we end up going three ways to a flop which comes Ace of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds, Four of Spades. When it checks to me, I think this is a slam dunk value bet spot. I have the Queen of Diamonds blocker against any flush draws. Any weaker Ace, some of the stronger Jacks will pay off a bet. So I bet small, trying to get value from all those hands. I bet $40. Early position player folds, and then the middle position player thinks for a bit, then raises. Very small. Raises to 100. Makes absolutely no sense to me. An out of position player raising on an ace high board when I have the nut advantage. I have pocket aces, pocket jacks a lot more often than him. He really can't have all the strongest hands, but nevertheless, he does raise. And he raises such a small sizing. It's so value heavy. Like, I guess you just have pocket fours? Like, you're out of position. What else could you have here that you're going to raise like that? This small bet ends up confusing me and gives me tunnel vision that my opponent could only have pocket fours. Having the Queen of Diamonds also adds heavily to my decision making here. Like he can't really be bluffing with a combo draw like Jack-10 of Diamonds or King-Queen of Diamonds. So I just do a very nitty fold and my opponent then shows King-9 of Diamonds. So had one of those Diamond draws, not sure what his plan is on any brick turn card, but he does have the Nut Flush draw, so I guess it's a decent raise and it gets a better hand to fold. So it works out very well for my opponent today. Following that, I'm under the gun. I raised to $20 with King Jack of Hearts. Honestly, in tougher games, you can probably just fold this under the gun, but I didn't come here to fold. I make a 20. 20 may not be enough as a middle position player, the button, and both blinds call. So we end up going five ways to a flop, which comes ace, 10, deuce, two hearts. Well, now I have a combo draw. Gut shot plus king high flush draw feels pretty good. I would bet if I had strong aces. So we're going to bet with my massive draw. Same size, I bet $40 into the 100, and the same player from the last hand does the same kind of small 2.5x raise. Well, in this spot, he's pretty weighted towards the, having an ace at least, because I heavily block the heart draws and any additional 
straight possibilities he may have. Unfortunately, the ace out there is not of hearts, so my opponent could have ace X of hearts, which I'd be doing pretty bad against, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We're not folding a second time, especially with a hand that I think is stronger than ace queen on boards such as this. When I make the call, we end up going heads up to the nine of spades turn card. Looks kind of connected to my hand, but unfortunately it isn't. Still just a gut shot and hearts, and hoping my opponent doesn't go too big with this turn bet. He goes very small again, can use for the same sizing, only 100. Well, I guess for that price, I'm really not going to fold, so I make the call, trying to realize some equity. I think raising is a mistake, all premium aces are probably just calling. But maybe I should have raised, because I brick the river, 8 of diamonds. I check to my opponent, who snap checks it back, and has ace deuce of spades. Well, he's never folding to a raise, just kind of disappointed that I didn't hit any of my outs. Play better, Kyle, just, just make your draws. The next hand of note, we arrive at the flop because it folded all the way to me on the button. I make it $20 with king nine of clubs. The small blind three bets to 70 and I decide to defend. Probably should just be a fold here. Very bad hand, king nine of clubs, but I'm tilted clearly. And we flop very good on 10, six, three, two clubs. The small blind then continues for $115. I'm going to have none of that. Played somewhat passive on my massive draw last time. This time we're gonna choose the aggressive route. I raised at 275. Very aggressive. A new die. And you won't be pushed around. I could get like ace king, ace queen to fold right here. And otherwise, if my opponent calls, I can continue just blasting on any seven, eight, jack, queen, all giving me gut shots as well as my flush draw, my club. King might be good against jacks or queens. So I like raising here. I get to pile on a ton of turn cards. My opponent decides to make the call and we are heads up to a turn card, which is the six of hearts. Absolute horrible turn card. One of the very few I really can't barrel on. One of the hands I'm also representing with my raise is pocket sixes and that's heavily reduced when the six pairs. I suppose if I had top set of pocket tens, I would bet again on this one, but not always. Sometimes I would check, give my opponent a chance to catch up, or throw out a bluff attempt themselves on the river. Either way, in this hand, I kind of relegated my opponent towards over pairs, and I don't think I can get him to fold to a second barrel on this specific turn card. So when he checks to me, that relegates me to checking and hoping to realize my club draw, which we do not. River is the eight of spades, does not help me. Would be a fun barreling card if we turned it. And now my opponent bets like $400. I just personally think this is a horrible bet with over pairs. If I had pocket tens, I'm calling. If I for some reason had six, seven of spades or six, five of spades, you know, middle pair plus some running straight possibilities, never folding. Otherwise, all my hands are. So this bet only gets called by premiums. I do not have one. I let it go and we are 0 for 2 on hitting draws today. Next interesting hand, I'm in early position. I raised to $20. The big blind, who is my three betting nemesis, decides to three bet me again. He makes it 60. Well, pocket fives isn't very good, but it does have great implied odds. If I flop a set, it'll be really sneaky and I should be able to win a massive pot. So I make the call. The flop is jack six four two diamonds and not a set all around my fives so close. My opponent continues for $55. Well, only one real overcard to worry about. My opponent does have ace king, ace queen, king queen in range, so there are actually plenty of hands that I'm still ahead of, as well as plenty of turn cards that will help me out. So I make the call for $55. The turn card's a pretty good one for me. Three of spades gives me open ended, but my opponent isn't slowing down. He bets $110. It is possible my opponent has ace jack here, pocket kings, pocket queens. I think all those play the same way. But I also think he doesn't give up with ace king, ace queen on this particular flop. And we're never really folding when we pick up open ended anyway. So I make the call. River is a terrible card, king of hearts. And my opponent checks to me. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm good. I think ace jack and even ace king plays the same way. I think ace king bet, bet, bink a pair, just go to showdown. And ace jack really hates this king too. I think for a very short amount of time about turning my hand into a bluff, but I don't really think this opponent checked river to fold. So I decided to just check it back, and surprisingly we're good. My opponent had ace-queen of spades, one of those big suited aces that just fired two barrels, but 
could not crack a pair of fives. Happy with that one. The same player who I've been battling with raises to $20 from early position. One mil position player calls. I call from the cutoff with pocket sixes. Small pairs have been performing pretty well for me today, so we're going to continue that trend. The big blind calls as well, so we end up going four ways to a flop of nine, eight, deuce, two diamonds. Well, the preflop aggressor continues for $35. This isn't really a board he should connect with ever, and he is an opponent who will just barrel with ace, king, ace, queen, so I guess we're just going to call him down with sixes. I made the call for 35, big blind folds, heads up to a turn card. It's the three of spades. Would have loved it to be a seven, six, or five, giving me some more outs, or a 10. But my opponent continues for $75. We've seen this opponent can just barrel off with some ace X's, so we're calling with sixes. And the river is the seven of clubs, a little bit too late. He checks to me. I'm hoping I beat like an ace queen hand a second time, but it will not be the case. When I check it back, he's got eight six of diamonds. So pretty dream flop for that hand. There are some runouts where this becomes a lot worse for me, so happy to only lose the amount that I did. Next hand of note. I have pocket eights. And with a button straddle, I'm in the small blind. I'm just going to limp this one. Would love to just flop a set. Think raising under the gun with hands such as this are just doing terrible as a three bent. But you can happily limp call. So that's what I do. Middle position makes it 50. Pretty happy to call this one. And the flop is queen jack nine. Heart heart diamond. So we get a gut shot. But there are three overs to our eights. Not really the best. But when my opponent bets $50, I'm not really folding. This opponent would see bet with his entire range nearly 100% of the time, regardless of the board. He could have ace five suited and be very thin against me, honestly. So we're going to continue for 50. The turn is the nine of hearts. We do have the eight of hearts. So we have a gut shot to the straight flush, flush draw, straight draw. That card might not be my opponent's favorite. So when I check it to him, Prepared to call pretty much any size bet when we turn a ton of equity, but he checks it back. River is the ace of hearts, so we do have a flush with our eight of hearts, but there are a ton of hands that beat us. I check, and I think this is horrible in retrospect. I think I can get value from hands like 10-9, 10-8, king-10, no heart, ace-jack, ace-queen, no heart. Plenty of hands that play this way that I'm beating and go for some relatively thin value on. But when I check, my opponent checks it back. He's got pocket fives with a heart. So one of the hands I would not have expected, but definitely one that probably gives me value on the river. Need to bet a little bit thinner, Kyle. After that, with two limps, I look down at ace five of spades. One of those fun little wheel aces that I'm actually going to raise because I'm on the button. Only one of the limpers calls so me. I'm going heads up to a flop of 10, 10, 7, 2 spades. When my opponent checks to me, I'm just going to bet I have ace high flush draw. He should miss a lot of the time. This is a pretty standard C bet spot. When I throw out $35, my opponent folds. I include this because there hasn't been too many easy hands on this vlog, so we'll take one. Well, another easy hand arrives. Under the gun raises to 20. Under the gun plus one calls. I have pocket queens. That's a premium. The under the gun and the plus one have the narrowest, tightest of ranges, so I'm going to size up a little bit here. They should have a stronger hand, should be able to call a $90 bet, but maybe I just went too big because both players fold and queens just take down a little over $40 of dead money. And this is probably the most interesting hand of the vlog. I bunch trail at $10 and with three limbs, I have pocket fives in the button. I raise to $60. The big blind folds, one of the limpers calls, and then the cutoff limp jams for about $660. Oh, this is disgusting. A limp jam from the cutoff. I actually expect this opponent in particular to do this with like sevens and eights and maybe like jack 10 suited, eight, nine suited. Like honestly, it's just middling cards a lot of the time, which is really horrible for me having pocket fives. I pretty happily rule out premiums and like ace king, ace queen. So the hand that I'm most concerned about at this point is like pocket sevens and pocket eights. I think that plays the same way a lot of the time, which doesn't even give me the 50-50 that I'd be hoping for if I call. I think if I had pocket tens, this is a pretty easy call. Pocket nines also kind of a side call, but fives is just so much lower that I think that I just have to fold this one. There is another $60 of dead money in there, kind of going through my mind, thinking I might take a 50-50. Comment below if you think this is a call or not. I eventually let it go. The other player lets his cards go, and the opponent who limp jams shows 9-6. Off suit. Love to see it, honestly. There are so many spots where I just have a hand that can snap call this one. Fives? 
just a little too weak in my opinion. Would have been even more tilting if I call and just a random six beats me. But, you know, that's definitely the hand of the night. Had my chance. On a final hand of note, with a bunch straddle, the small blind raised to 30. I have ace-king off suit. We are three betting this because it's ace-king. I make it $100. It's possibly too big. Both players snap fold, but we do get a little bit back before we end the day. We end up losing $280 on the day, which across five hours equates to $56 an hour or 11 big blinds an hour. Despite the results, I actually think I played a lot better today than I have been in the past. I think I'm definitely increasing my aggression factor, which should be happening. Getting to steal certain pots here and there, and on this particular day, if just one of my combo draws got there, I am definitely profitable. And additionally, if I can just pull the trigger with fives against nine, six off suit, possibly make some money there. But if you've stayed all the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. And there will be more to come next week.